In this boat tour video, I'll be showing you around and explore yachts that I'm almost certain you would never have seen before. Each time I have shown a picture of this boat on my Instagram, she's always attracted quite a lot of attention and interest. So of course, I'll be interested to read your thoughts in the comments section below. Welcome back to the channel and welcome aboard this really unique and very special Explorer yacht. I can't wait to show you around, but before I do, please don't forget to give the video a like and also don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I've got some fantastic boats coming up and I know you won't want to miss them. So make sure you please hit the notification bell. Before we start, I'd like to say a big thank you to my subscribers for following my nautical journey aboard some of the best explorer yachts ever to sail the seven seas. Today, you join me on board Dutch Lion, a 21.3 meter aluminium explorer yacht that was built in the Netherlands in 2023. Dutch Lion is a custom built explorer yacht and she is a unique vessel built for the owner of a shipyard. She has a beam of 6 metres, an air draft of 9.15 metres, which reduces to 6 metres when you lower the mast. She pulls a draft of 1.76 metres and inside has a headroom of 2 metres. She has a displacement of 60 tonnes and is a CE Category A vessel, which means she meets the highest standards of safety and seaworthiness under the European Union's Recreational Craft Directive. Category A, also known as Ocean, indicates that Dutch Lion is designed for extended voyages where conditions may exceed wind force 8 on the Belfort scale and significant wave heights above 4 metres. This classification ensures she is capable of withstanding challenging sea conditions, making her self-sufficient in remote areas and ready to handle the most demanding ocean passages. Today I'm going to show you around Dutch Lion, starting off with the spacious flybridge. The large flybridge split over two levels. Obviously on the aft section we have the boat deck and here we have a decent sized tender on here as well. Over on the starboard side obviously we've got the life rafts. If we walk over onto the port side, so I can show you over here, Obviously this is where the crane is, over here on the port side. Just quickly, I do have a new micro site with loads of boat related information. So if you get a spare couple of minutes at the end of the video, please feel free to check it out. You can find the link in the video description and I will also pin one in the comments section as well. Handrails all around the cap rails up here. So plenty of stuff to grab onto. You feel nice and secure up here, which is obviously really important especially if you're going to have little people on board let's head forward and i'll take you over onto the starboard side and we'll go up onto the helm position also i love this radar mast there we've got the simrad radar there aerials atop that a satellite dome as well but as you can see it's got a hinge on this radar mast so if you want to you can lower this to reduce your air draft as well but we head over onto the starboard side and here we come to the entertainment area so we've got a u-shaped seating area over here on the port side plenty of room you could quite easily fit i don't know maybe eight or ten people seated around here and what a great place to sit down and enjoy that view for people like me who like to avoid the midday sun as well i love the fact that we've got this shade which i think is really important when you're on the upper deck it's always good to have bolt holes where you can go to to escape that midday sun as and when you need to so over here on the starboard side 
Obviously you've got a serving area. Let's open up a couple of these for you. That's very, very heavy actually. A lot heavier than what I thought. I'm doing it with one hand. I don't want to drop it. And there we've got the sink there, look. Yeah, great area. Lots of space to get all your food prep ready, serve some drinks to your guests, uh, whatever it is you want to do. And of course, over here we've got the helm position, the midship's helm position. I'm going to take you down into the wheelhouse a little bit later on in the tour. Uh, but as you can see, throttle control levers over there on the starboard side. Two large Simrad multifunction displays there, and the controls for the bow and the stern thruster located there on the left hand side. Also, got some cushions up here as well, so you can plant yourself up here. Another good angle to enjoy the view. If we move forward a little bit, you'll be able to see the view of the bow. Big old searchlight there, and look, look at that bow. We're going to head down there in just a second. Before I do that, let me just pan around so again I can show you this space. There is lots and lots of space up here and I really love the layout. I love the fact we've got the boat deck aft there. Uh, I love the fact that we've got this huge seating area just aft of the captain's chair as well. But yeah, I can imagine this boat down the med or wherever, wherever you want to take her, wherever the sun is, lapping up those views. Wow and enjoying this space surrounded by your favorite people. But anyway, let's head off, go back down the stairs and I'm gonna take you around the upper deck. Dotted around the boats, you will find several Maxwell capstans strategically placed to ensure that coming alongside is as stress-free as possible. The deck on the boat is finished with synthetic teak and the hull was last anti-found in 2023. As you can see, if we need to, we do have a windbreaker here as well. So you can lower that, that zips down and it'll protect everybody on the cockpit from the wind, especially when you're at anchor. But yeah, these side decks are really wide. We've got an access gate over here on the starboard side. Again, as I walk after forward, I'm not having to pivot or spin around. Uh, and if you are working the lines with whoever's helping you, you can quite easily pass each other uh, without getting in each other's way and preventing each other from moving around. And when you are, once again, punting through the big lumpy stuff out there, got plenty of scuppers to allow all the excess water to quickly go over the deck. The whole shape on this boat is round bilged, meaning that as well as increased fuel efficiency, the vessel also experiences a smoother ride in rough seas. The boat also has a bulbous bow, which reduces wave resistance, improves fuel efficiency, enhances speed, and provides greater stability when things get a bit rough when you're out on the open sea. As we emerge now out onto the bow, as you can see, we've got some sun pans over here. So again, another place to enjoy the sun. Not there is much sun today here in the Netherlands. The rain always seems to follow me around, uh, and hopefully I can get back inside before that rain hits. Again, more seating area here. Just imagine yourself sat here whilst you're underway, or your friends and family sat here whilst you're underway enjoying that view. But as I say, again, it just reflects the fantastic use of space everywhere on this boat. You really do feel like every piece of real estate on this vessel has been optimized for entertaining, for just enjoying being on the water. And that's what being on a boat is all about. She's fitted with two stainless steel anchors, which are attached to 75 meters of 13 millimeter chain, recovered and deployed with an electrical Maxwell windlass. In case you are wondering what is under here, let me open this up for you. It's on a strut, so it's actually quite easy to do with one hand, but look, plenty of space to stow whatever it is you want to stow away up here. There's one over there on the starboard side as well. I won't lift that up. I'm sure you can imagine the space is pretty much the same on that side as it is over here on the port side. But let's get a glimpse of the windows on that wheelhouse. Again, you know, sometimes you just look at a boat and you look at the way that the boat's configured, the way it's designed, and you can just tell that they are designed for the big rough stuff to go out in any kind of sea state. And that's definitely the sense and feel that you get being aboard this boat. Obviously nobody intends to really go out in rough weather, but even with the best weather planning, route planning, 
sometimes you just can't avoid that squall and when it does hit it's always good to know that you're on a boat that can handle it and that's definitely what this boat can do it can handle the rough stuff and that's what exploring on a yacht is all about and remember if you haven't already then i do have an entire playlist dedicated to explorer yachts you'll find it on the main channel over there on the port side is another access point down into the engine room and i'm going to take you down there in a second but first let's go into the saloon over on the starboard side we've got an l-shaped seating area there nice big windows allowing lots of natural light into this space and over here on the port side uh, we have the galley obviously we've got our hob over here got a cooler loads of cabinetry under here so plenty of space to store all your stuff got the sink over there look and again if we look through these big windows you get a really good sense of just how much you can enjoy the seascape regardless of where you are and also we've got a little friend on this boat as well you're a good boy <laughs> right anyway so down here this is where we'll find the master cabin we're going to go down there in a second but first let's continue forward come up these two steps into another seating area which again is set up really nicely l-shaped seating over here on the starboard side over here on the port side you see we've got some more cabinetry more countertop space and over here more importantly we have a wine cooler but again so we've come up two steps so we're in a slightly elevated position but i'm sure if i pan around you get a really good sense of how much space we've got here the headroom is exceptional as my subscribers already know i'm about six foot four uh, and i've got about four inches of space above me nice light feature there as well moving forward we've got the helm position amidships look at the size of that captain's chair as well perfect for passage making you can spend a long time sat in there in comfort you've got some additional simrack controls over here on the left armrest and over here on the right armrest we've got a mouse ball so you can control where the cursor is on these multifunction screens as well got two large ones again simrad as um, as we've got on the flybridge throttle control levers over there on the starboard side the ship's wheel obviously and the controls for the bow and stern thruster and over here we have our dock mate so you can be out on the upper deck and still have control of the boat while you're bringing her alongside um, or casting off all of the main nav and comms gear on this boat is made by simrad including the depth sounder autopilot and the radars the two 19 inch multifunction displays are also made by simrad as always i'm interested to hear what you think about this pilot's house so share your thoughts in the comments below a starboard access door over there and of course we've got another one over here on the port side which is currently open if we look on the overhead something that i haven't seen that often on the boats that i tour i mean look at that we've got the vents here for the air conditioning the heating dotted all around but also they made really good use of that void above because you can put some additional uh, storage items in there as well so again you know this boat is all about long distance passage making staying on board for months at a time and you can see just by looking around this living space that this boat is suited for long periods away And when I first came on board, I was talking to the owner about this compass rose. So this compass rose was purchased off the internet uh, and installed on the boat by the owner. But yeah, I love this traditional compass rose there. So let's head down into the accommodation area. We'll go down into the guest accommodation, which is forward. Um, so if you're interested in acquiring a boat like this and you're thinking, do you know what, when I'm on board, I want my space as an owner to be separate from the guest accommodation and then that's exactly what this boat offers so this is the guest accommodation forward uh, we've got three cabins down here and then in, in a second we're going to head aft and i'll show you the owner's cabin we're moving forward into the vip cabin as you can see got a double bed here big double bed amidships you step up so slightly elevated and you can walk all around this bed as well 
two portholes over there on the starboard side. Uh, we've got a skylight up there as well, so you can get lots of light in here. Another two portholes over there on the port side. And of course, these can be opened up as well to allow additional ventilation down here. Uh, we've got the climate control, digital climate control panel over there on the port side on the bulkhead. And we've got the reading lights there as well and the PowerPoint, so you can plug in your laptops or whatever it is you want to plug in over there. Lots of storage space. Open this up. There you go, get some stuff in there. If we spin around, I don't want to spin around too fast because I often get told by you, my subscribers, that when I pan around on these boats, sometimes it makes you feel a little bit nauseous. So I make sure that as I pan around, I do it nice and slowly. Okay, it's come out of the VIP cabin. And over here on the port side, we've got a head. Again, another window that can be opened up over there with some ventilation. And if we spin around over onto the starboard side, open up this door, you can see this is where the shower is. Nice big shower with a big rain head feature in there. A handheld shower as well sink more storage underneath the sink for all your toiletries another porthole with a blind obviously it's opened at the moment but if you wanted some privacy you can shut that although it's smoked glass so you can see out but you can't see in again here look we've got an excellent space to keep all of your towels hand towels whatever it is you want to keep in there all right let's head back out of the shower and spin around so just so you can orientate yourself that is aft over there starboard side over here is the port side let's head into the starboard guest cabin as you can see we've got a double bed there and above that we've got a single berth as well again we've got those reading lights digital control panel for the climate control two decent sized portholes over there again they can be opened up for some additional ventilation in the area and we've got some blinds that can be closed as well be old mirror give you the standard salute let's pop open this just so i can show you some of the spaces on here in terms of where you can keep all of your stuff let's head out of this guest cabin we'll move over onto the port side and show you the second guest cabin which has the same layout as the other one but again we've got the digital control for the climate nice little shelf there to put your phone in when it's charging I mean, even things like that. So if you are gonna be on this berth, the top one, you can plug your phone in there and have it right next to you. Again, it's little features like little touches that I think are really important to point out when you're on boats like this. Okay, so that is the guest accommodation. Come up these two steps, come up this stair case. As you can see, obviously we've got things that we can grab onto when we're underway punching through the big waves and let me now take you into the owner's cabin which is a midships so one of the benefits of having an owner's cabin a midships is that you're going to experience less movement from the boat as well um, something that i need to point out as well look we do have a tv recessed into the cabinetry there as well so it's a great place to sit down and watch some telly but yeah as i say one of the benefits is of having a midships owner's cabin is that you're going to experience less movement when the boat is underway in the choppy stuff so we come down this stairwell and here we are in the owner's cabin so a big double bed there obviously over there that's the port bulkhead two portholes there and look a big blind that's obviously open up at the moment but look all that cabinetry plenty of space to keep all of your belongings I'm not going to open all that up because as you know the owner is on board and does stay on board so out of respect for his privacy i'm not going to open all that up i'm sure you can guess what's behind there and then the opposite the double bed is where we have the ensuite with the sink another two portholes there obviously toilet over here and a nice big shower Again, another rain head. We do love a rain head shower on this channel. But yeah, really great space. And at the foot of the bed, as you can probably see, we've got a TV that with a touch of a button 
you can open up and you can sit or lay in bed and enjoy a few films after a busy day of cruising on the water. But yeah, this is the owner's cabin, so let me know what you think in the comments below. Let's turn around, we're facing aft now. Come up the stairwell on the starboard side. Ascend back into the saloon again. And now I'm gonna take you into the engine room. So as I said before, there's two ways of getting into the engine room on this boat. Uh, you can access the engine room via the swim platform going to the lazarette and into the engine room that way. But let me just show you the access point into the engine room using this door over on the port side of the cockpit. The boat is powered by two powerful Iveco F4 engines, each delivering 370 horsepower, and both have only 65 hours of runtime. In addition to the engines, we have both a bow and stern thruster from Side Power, which are electrical and provide excellent maneuverability. There is also a Kohler 13.5 kilowatt generator, ensuring there's plenty of power for all on board, and the yacht is also equipped with zero speed stabilizers. Now, let's talk about fuel. The main fuel tank holds 7,000 litres, which is about 1,849 US gallons, and there's also a day tank with a capacity of 1,750 litres, or roughly 462 US gallons. For fresh water, we've got a 3,400 litre tank, equivalent to about 898 US gallons. And for the black water, the capacity is 1,750 litres. So that was the engine room. Before I finish this yacht tour, I just want to quickly take you back on to the swim platform and show you the size of the lazarette on this boat as well. So back in onto the cockpit, head over to the starboard side, through this access gate, down these three stairs, back onto the big swim platform again. And here we have obviously the door that opens up on the transom into the lazarette. If I poke my head in here, you can see just how much space you've got in here. Another little fridge down there, look. Switch gear over there on the port side. There's the door, so we're on the other side of the door now that uh, leads you into the engine room. In terms of a range, I've done some very rough calculations as there's no information in the public domain and I came up with a figure of around 3,000 nautical miles, but don't quote me on that. So thanks for joining me on this yacht tour. I really hope you've enjoyed having a look around. As I said at the beginning of the video, this is really a very unique boat and it's been a privilege to be able to come on board and show you around. I'd like to say a massive thank you to the owner for letting me come on board and show you guys around so you can see what this boat is all about. I'd also like to say a big thank you to Devolk Yacht Brokers for making this tour possible. Now at the time of filming this video and uploading it to my YouTube channel, this vessel is currently listed for sale. If you wanna find out more, make sure you click on the link that I'll leave in the video description and the link in the bio as well. And remember, if you've got access to a boat you'd like me to feature on my channel, feel free to get in contact with me. And if you've got a boat that's for sale, or if you're looking for a boat to buy, or if you're looking for a boat to charter, again, make sure you check out my micro site because there's lots of information on there. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please give the video a like. Don't forget to subscribe because we've got more boat tours coming up, more exceptional explorer yachts to share with you. Uh, and make sure you hit the notification bell so you don't miss those videos. And also don't forget, I do have a newsletter now as well. If you're interested in the world of explorer yachts, then make sure you subscribe to it. It's completely free. You'll never get any spam. You'll find the link for that in my bio. And until next time, fair winds and following seas. If you enjoyed this video, I'm fairly confident you'll enjoy the video that I made about this Allo ship, as well as the video that I made about this Bourne Cruiser as well. To find the videos, I'll leave the links in the video description.